Marlow's Networks of Expectations. Based on the doctoral thesis, Marlow's Logical Diagrams for Visual and Heterogeneous Reasoning. Suppose we classify people according to two criteria, to be told A and to be handsome to B. If we use this criteria digodomously, we obtain four kinds of people. Each of these types of people is a theoretical object. A theoretical object is a unique and distinct set of qualities. The number of objects in a network of expectations depends on the number of criteria, as well as the degrees of being in which we divide those criteria. In this case, we only distinguish handsome and ugly. But for nothing handsome to perfectly handsome, the number of times could be infinite in theory. Starting from the common qualities of the objects, we can build sets. And in this case, the objects above set the quality A. To be told, the objects below set the quality not A, to be short. With the common qualities, we generate the OR nodes. First, we have the OR node A. Second, we have the OR node not A. Both nodes depend on the same common criterion. We represent the criteria by underlying the variable. The or not A will be true if there is someone tall, handsome or ugly. The or not not A will be true if there is someone short, handsome or ugly. Supernodal of criterion A will be true if there is someone tall or short, handsome or ugly. From the nodes of the objects we can also generate and nodes. When there is someone tall and handsome, and there is someone tall and ugly, the unknown A is true. When there is someone short and handsome, and someone short and ugly, the unknown not A is true. When there are all kinds of people, an supernode is true. So, starting from the objects, we will set that go from the OR nodes to the AND nodes. Sets can be built from the perspective of any criteria, which does not affect object nodes. The set is the basis of the inference, regardless of the number of criteria or the number of the divisions. We call the set of all sets alpha. Propagation of activation by the nodes of the set, the principles of inference. We can consider all the nodes of the net initially uncertain, with numerical value equal to zero or chromatic value equal to yellow. Color codes have an exact translation into numerical values, ranging from minus one, sure that it is not going to zero, uncertain, to one, sure that this presence is true here and now. To understand the laws of the spread of certainty, we can assume that we are talking about the set formed by my two two cousins, John and Peter. The OR node will be true when any of them is present. The central nodes represent the specific individuals, Peter and John. The upper central node will be true when it is certain that John is here and now. The lower central node will be true when it is certain that Peter is here and now. The end node will be true when it is certain that both are here and now. In case number one, the starting point of the inference is the truth of the OR node. That is, we say that it is true that there is at least one object. It could be the case if in the distance we see one of the twins entering our house, but without being able to say if it is Peter or John and without knowing if the other is inside or not. At that time, we have sufficient reasons to think that there is a twin in our house. The OR node certainty is divided between central objects, so the value of the OR node is divided between John and Peter. At the same time, the R node acquires a truth value equal to the average truth of the central nodes, in this case equal to 0.5. We still have reasons to think that it is likely that the two twins are in our house here and now. In case 2, we begin by affirming central node or specific object. 
For example, we see John entering the house but without knowing if Peter is inside. From there, we deduce that it is true that there is someone and we deduce that the value of the certainty that it is true that everyone is there and note is equal to 0.5, which is the average of 1 and 0. In case 3, a trusted source assures us that all the twins are in our house. Then, we know that John is in our house here and now, and we know that Peter is also in our house. We also know that it is true that there is at least one or what is the same, we can assume that the inclusive disjunction Peter or John is at home is true. In case 4, a reliable source assures us that it is false that there is someone. Then we can infer that the central nodes are false and consequently that the R node is false. In case 5, the only information we have is that we have seen John leave our house, but without knowing if Peter is inside. At this moment, it is true that the top central node representing John is in our house is false. Consequently, it is false that both twins are at home. But the central node representing Peter remains uncertain. For its part, the old node acquires a value equal to minus 0.5, orange which is interpreted as likely to be false, and that results from averaging the false values of the central nodes. If we think about it, the only certain information we have in case 5 is that John is not there. Is there anyone? Probably not, and although Peter might finally be in our house at this point, the information we have leads us to think that he is not there. In case 6, we assume that the proposition, everything is true, is false. At that time, we only know that both twins are not at home. So, we have the same reason to think that it is probably true that he is not at home for each of them. That is, we have minus 0.5 against the presence of one and minus 0.5 against the presence of the other. At the same time, since we only have evidence to think that one is absent, we only have reason to consider the old node as probably false, which results from averaging the falsity of the objects. Statistical reasoning in the second inference. Imagine that we ask 10 young people if they know who Eva Peron was. If nine of them already answered no, we can conclude that the 10 young man probably does not know her either. How have we come to this conclusion? When we give the object's nodes a known zero value, the values of the own nodes and the values of the unknown nodes are also modified as a result of what we call first inference. Based on the network propagation rules we explained above, we can make a second inference to update the value of all object nodes, taking into account the values acquired by the AND and OR nodes. In any case, we believe that it is convenient to distinguish the expectation that the ten young man does not know Eva Peron from the values of time in the rest of the occasions by direct evidence. These expected values seem more theoretical, more mental, and that is why we are represented bordering the nucleus of the node. In this way, we can separate what we know from what we assume. We can obtain a classification of the type of reasoning that occur in networks, based on the strength of the inference. The deduction propagates logic values of absolute certainty. In induction, absolute values are only reached when all the values of the object nodes are known. In probable reasoning, values are only approximate. Finally, in the statistical reasoning generated in the second inference, the assumed values of the objects are only supported by direct evidence of other real known values. Following the tradition of mathematical logic except for the conjunction, we define the logical connectors by the combination they eliminate from the network. A node can be removed when it is not reasonable to expect that there will be some stimulus with its qualities. 
the elimination of a node implies the elimination of all the nodes that depend on it. The object nodes removed are not taken into account when considering the values of an and all nodes. As we will see next, we do not need an nodes to solve the so-called propositional calculus or statement logic. We do not need an nodes to solve propositional calculus. In 2017, we created a simple version of networks in which logical connectees are represented by eliminating certain nodes from the network. The numbers in the network indicate which premise remove certain nodes. We reach conclusions by following the rules of inference of the expectation networks. Networks can conform to the conventions of the mathematical logic or Aristotelian logic regarding the assertion of existence in universal propositions. If we consider a variable hypothetically, we could keep the value zero in its nodes. If we consider that the presence or the absence of a node is true here and now, we will give it a value equal to mass plus or minus one. We are currently working on the implementation of the nodes with if and then tabs. In this way, we can represent the propositions traditionally called complex or secondary. This type of proposition goes beyond syllogisms because they affirm connections that are not justified by the elementary rules of combinatorics as occurs in primary propositions. In other words, complex propositions establish a posteriori connection between nodes that are not on the same network path. For example, we can affirm that if there are students who work, there are students who do not work. In our networks, it can be true at the same time that I have A and not A. If we want to operate with the rules of propositional calculus, we must establish that only one object node can be true at this moment. If we take a look at the infographic, we'll see that the first premise states that if P node Q is eliminated, then no PQ is also eliminated. The second premise states that if no PQ is eliminated, then no P, no Q is also eliminated. The third premise affirms the elimination of P, no Q, which entails the elimination of no PQ based on the first premise. Now the elimination of no P, Q entails the elimination of no P, no Q based on the second premise. This triggers the removal of almost all object nodes from the right column. The node node P is removed because no one of its objects exists anymore. Premise number 4 removes all nodes that still contain the P-R combination. If we run existential charge to the disjunction no P or no R, then the node P, Q, no R necessarily exists here and now, as well as all its components. Expectation networks are included in the doctoral thesis Marlow's logic diagrams for visual and heterogeneous reasoning. These networks operate with colors and tree diagrams. The nets are intuitive for students who perfectly see the conclusions using colors. The networks are a development of the Marlow diagram in which conclusions are obtained by superimposing propositional models. Marlow diagrams are easy and intuitive even for children. The diagram is being used successfully as a tool to teach propositional calculus in high school. We believe that expectation networks could be good models of private thinking that take place in neural networks. While Marlow's diagrams represent the way we communicate our propositions through language.